Under the Mistletoe. This is the story of my Christmas vacation to Beirut, Lebanon, which took place this year, which is 2018. I flew out of Houston and flew into Beirut. I went out to Houston, drove up to Houston. It's a five hour drive from my house the day before so that I would not have to drive up that morning. I was flying out on Christmas Eve day and my flight did not leave until four o'clock in the afternoon, but I wanted to get up there in plenty of time so I wasn't going to worry about car trouble or traffic or anything like that. Rented a hotel and here uh, Celine Imelda, I call her Celine, Imelda is just going to bed and because there is eight hours of uh, time difference between Texas and Beirut oftentimes this is the case I'm either waking her up first thing in the morning and actually I think I was waking her up here I don't think she was going to bed I think I was waking her up and and the that's how the long distance relationships are now it's much different than what it was in past generations the smartphones allow us the video conference they allow me to take Celine into a store with me if I want her opinion on some type of electronic or if we're cooking a recipe and we're buying ingredients which which I've done that I go in there can show her the products on the store shelves she tells me which one she thinks is best when I come home I set it up on the laptop or on the iPad and she can watch me cook the food and she can tell me put a little more pepper in there or you know put a little more oil in there or whatever uh, the case is with the with the recipe we are able to study the Bible together we are able to sing songs together I have a guitar and so you know we're able to actually have a functional relationship an emotional relationship through the use of our smartphones and video chatting so it it is quite different than in past generations and something that God has opened up for us because as Seventh-day Adventist, oftentimes there are not a lot of Seventh-day Adventists that live in our area. And so we build a network through uh, a dating website. And there's a few different Adventist dating, dating websites out there. So that Adventists can meet other Adventists and that they can build a relationship that is for the glory of God. Uh, I did finally get into the airport there and got on my plane and I had a layover then in London. My layover in London was about six hours long, so I had plenty of time there. I did sit down and uh, well, I was flying all night long, so when I got into London, it was the morning, and so I sat down and had some breakfast there. I'd ordered some salmon that was on the menu, and they, they del brought it to me raw, and I've never eaten raw salmon, so I sent it back very courteous I mean I'm, I'm the one that uh, is outside of my culture and outside of my uh, country so I really am not used to the customs of eating raw fish so uh, I sent it back and ordered the vegetarian plate and I had that then uh, we actually switched airlines but I United serviced it the whole time so I didn't have to check take my baggage out and recheck it in switched airlines and flew down to Beirut then on Middle Eastern Airlines and that was a five hour flight. Then I get to meet Celine in person for the first time. And she was there waiting for me and had a welcome balloon, which is not in this picture. And she took me then off to my hotel. I had brought my chef's hat and we were going to a party. Celine had been cooking food and preparing for this party for her employer all day long and I told her if she's got to work that's fine I'm willing to uh, put on my chef's hat I had my tuxedo and I know there's a very high class uh, people that she works for and so I wanted to be a class act and I figured I'd fit right in but she said no that her boss had invited me to attend the party and didn't need me serving at it so it was Christmas and First time I would ever kiss Celine would be on this uh, trip. So I thought it was only necessary to bring the mistletoe 
for the first kiss ever to my girlfriend who I have been dating online for eight months now the Christmas party was a banquet no doubt about that all types of food and the good thing about here is uh, they are Muslim so I don't have to worry about being served pork I don't have to ask you know are these there lard in the beans there's a house full of employees that were there and they were very festive even though they were working all day long and it was Christmas nobody had down spirits everybody was very happy it was a very nice jubilant environment to be in next day we went walking along the ocean front and Beirut is a peninsula primarily or for a large part it's a peninsula which is surrounded in on three sides by the Mediterranean Sea and so this was a first for me uh, of course being a student of the Bible and loving history very familiar with this geographical area of the various world powers that had conquered Lebanon over the years of Paul's missionary trips um, on the Mediterranean Sea so it was all kind of sentimental and exciting to see part of the world it was, it was a little chilly not too chilly we got to the uh, harbor area and found a Starbucks so I was able to get a decaf uh, skinny we took the opportunity to get a few pictures taken this was a place or is a place that Celine often comes with her friends she normally has Sunday off so she does some type of activity and knows this area very well she's been living in Beirut for 11 years now that is an olive tree behind us here on the far right and the red lights shining up on it is what gives it that glow sat down and took a rest nice wide sidewalk there behind me you can't see it but there are skyscrapers in in the skyline the entire si other side of the street so you have this sidewalk next to the ocean on the other side of the street are all the high-rises in the city American University of Beirut is right along this walk and so we took the opportunity to get a photo there just a little selfie that we we're taking very nice time being there so Celine asked me to step back and take a picture and so I posed for a picture for her there you can see some some of the skyline there of Beirut just a small portion of it the uh, the harbor there that I'm standing at and then the Lebanese flag flying behind me next day we decided to go up into the mountains to see some snow not a lot of snow here in Texas so that was a novelty to be able to go and see some snow we hired a taxi cab and he drove us up into the mountains so we took some pictures on the way up there it had just snowed recently so in another month there'll be a lot more snow here this is just a little bit of snow cover that they're getting at the beginning of winter the road you can see they're already having to plow the snow though it is enough snow that it has to be plowed here is the ski resort we took a selfie inside the taxi cab on the road on up there you can see some of the geo geological features of the rocks and so forth that are along the road that there's signs that are telling us to beware of falling rocks here is the lounge of the ski resort this is the picture on the left is me sitting on the steps outside and on the right is Celine inside in one of the hallways they're the same hallway both of us taking a picture together you can see the snow that has drifted along the windows outside and then we found this Christmas tree there and that looked like a good opportunity for some pictures 
we got outside here and into the snow behind next to this little cabin here and I took the opportunity to propose to Celine and ask her if she would marry me and she accepted so we spent a little bit not too much time but a little bit of time in the snow you can see here to the right is a cedar tree and Lebanon is known for cedar trees it's in their flag on the left hand side you can see some cedar trees f further back behind the ski equipment there there we are posing right in front of a couple of large cedar trees there inside the lounge there we were we brought we brought a friend with us and so she was taking some pictures of us there inside the lounge of course there we we just became officially engaged so we were pretty happy about that we went back to that Christmas tree get some pictures taken no mistletoe around but that uh, didn't dampen the, stu uh, the spirits actually I think we brought some mistletoe with us but we couldn't find a place to hang it up there so no mistletoe but we still thought we might sneak a little kiss Celine sitting in the lounge area there we took a picture by the piano they had a fire going which uh, you always think of a ski lounge uh, has to have a decent fireplace in it so we found the fireplace for some there's the two of us the fireplace is behind us and uh, outside here this is one of the uh, skiing areas a small skiing area but you can see this from the window of the ski lodge then uh, we had drive back down, come back up, this, come back down the same way we went up. This is down towards the base of the mountain. Far Fararia is the name of this area, and it is a popular ski resort in the Middle East. As you can imagine, there's not a lot of ski resorts in the Middle East, so a lot of the people from that area, from Syria and from Egypt and from Saudi Arabia, in Iraq they come over here to go skiing then in Beirut there is a large Catholic population and so we went to see Our Lady of Lebanon which is as you can see a statue of Mary up on a pedestal we did run across some Mexicans here so I could hear some of the Spanish language I'm at the base there you can can't even make out that it's me but in the picture on the left hand side you see that guy standing in the middle and that is me and then on the right is Celine leaning over the railing and touching one of the trees as we are climbing the stairs going to the top here they have a display of a nativity display this is also at the same area at our Lady of Lebanon and so Celine took the opportunity to get a picture taken there once you get all the way up to the top there's quite a view of the city and so that was some pictures I took when we were up at the top this is a view from my balcony and so you can see you look I'm looking out across some skyscrapers and the Med Mediterranean Sea is beyond there we took some selfies this is same place this is in the balcony because of the light here you can't really see the ocean or the Mediterranean Sea behind us there but this is uh, in the same spot and, uh, and as this is too now the lights a little different here so you can look in the back there and see the Mediterranean Sea there on this one So I was able to make use of that chef's hat after all and we bought some vegetables and I was and I brought some vegetarian meat I brought quite a bit of food with me and uh, the vegetarian meat was a soy product that I buy from the University of Montemorelos in Mexico and 
and so I brought it over there and in the pot the what looks like a stainless steel pot next to that that is where I made the vegetarian meat substitute and then here we were frying the vegetables the fresh vegetables that we bought and then later we would combine the vegetarian meat with the vegetables and turned out very good that's just another selfie there that we took yeah, this is in the apartment that i bought or the apartment that i rented i i rented a suite so it had a little kitchenette in it, it had a little sitting area with a couch and a bed and and it was a uh, nice just that the hot water wasn't so great it was old too it was an old old hotel but a very reasonable price very spacious and served my needs while i was there here is a shopping mall and that's right downtown beirut the shopping mall is like i think there's five stories five levels of shops and then the parking lot is a parking garage and there's like four levels under it so they dug down into the earth and they made a parking garage underneath the shopping mall you go all the way up to the very top floor and there's no roof and that's in the middle picture there um i'm on the roof so to speak if you want to call it that that is the top floor where they're the last shops are at and they have vegetation growing there and it's green so when it rains you know you'd get rained on if you're at, if you're on the top floor in the shopping mall the both these pictures on the far left and on the far right are taken also in that shopping mall and this is just right downtown that's not a picture of the shopping mall but that is a picture of the beirut area that we're talking about and the shopping mall is just down amongst all these tall buildings well on sabbath we made it to middle east university which is a seventh Adventist university in beirut not a very big university but of course uh, it is predominantly a muslim country and seems like anybody that's not muslim is a catholic so you know it's a very tough area to uh, to work but there are a handful of Adventists there we do have a university there we also have a high school there this here is the dorm rooms this is the cafeteria and the administration building that we first looked at which is you can see the administration here be beyond the trees there's the flagpole with the Lebanese flag the building off to the right is the dormitory building and if you could see off to the left is a cafeteria so basically this campus is a small campus and it's got three principal buildings the administration and classroom building the dormitories and the cafeteria there we attended church service there there is an Arabic church Seventh Avenue Arabic church at the uh, Academy at the high school Academy campus but since I don't speak Arabic we went to the English church and the English church holds their church service in the auditorium there on the Middle East University campus there you can see we are standing underneath the uh, lettering and that is uh, on the administration building now Celine she's she speaks Arabic but but I don't so she was a godsend to every place we went you know she could talk to the people and Celine she can speak six languages but she's not fluent in all of them and some of them she hasn't used for quite a while so she would uh, be hard-pressed to speak probably Mandarin if she had to speak that but she learned that when she where she had to learn that in order to work in Taiwan where she worked for a year <clears throat> and she's learned some French because the people that she works for and a lot of people in Beirut speak French so you know, she speaks English and Tagalog which is the Filipino national language and she speaks Visayan which is a dialect there in the Philippines and Mandarin and Arabic and she's going to learn Spanish once she moves here to Texas those here are some of the Filipinos that Seventh Avenue Filipinos that attend church there at the Middle East University in Beirut 
the here this is a selfie that we actually took in church you know while it was between the sabbath school and the church service when you have a few minutes a little bit of a break and we took this picture then uh yeah then saturday night we went downtown beirut and saw their christmas festives festivities now it is a majority muslim nation but they like to celebrate christmas There's a couple dancing bears there, and so Celine went up there and got her picture taken. And it, this is uh, after Christmas, you know, so Santa's station, Santa's workshop is all empty. All those gifts have been delivered to all the boys and girls. And uh, on Christmas Eve night, I spent nine hours up in the air with Santa flying Christmas Eve night. First time, first time I ever spent the night in the air. On, I know it's something Santa does every year, but it was the first time I ever spent all of Christmas Eve night in the air but I was uh, I left Houston at four o'clock in the evening and we landed in London at seven o'clock in the morning so we were up there working it with Santa here another nativity scene this is right downtown Beirut then we went to a Chinese restaurant and uh, I asked Celine what restaurant she wanted to go to. I wanted to take her to a very nice restaurant. She was inclined just to cook in the hotel room, but I said, you know, let's let's do something nice. And I didn't know if there was a place they had music or if there was a seafood restaurant that overlooked the Mediterranean or you know some type of nice restaurant. And this was the restaurant that she chose, so we went to this one. Uh, she, Celine can eat with chopsticks with no problem. Uh, I would starve if I had to eat with chopsticks. So uh, she was uh, showing me her expert chopstick using skills. There we took a selfie of us in the restaurant there. Then uh, we continue walking downtown Beirut and the uh, city is really decorated for Christmas. And then we decided to go bowling and we went to the bowling alley and the very first ball strike and Celine says wow you're good and, and that is pretty impressive first time I ever go bowling with her and the very first ball that I roll down the uh, aisle is a strike and so her comment was well, you're pretty good at this and I said no not really <laughs> and uh, and she beat me you can see on the scorecard that I got two strikes and still didn't break 100 and uh, she got one spare and she was able to beat me pretty easily there so we need more time practicing uh, here's some more of the skyline of, of Beirut so then trip was almost over went back to the hotel and I had the mistletoe hanging on the we uh, had our good goodbye and the, very early the next morning my flight left at like 6 30 so i had to be at the airport at like 4 30 or some obnoxiously early time and uh, and i flew of course came home the same way i went there so i flew up to london and then from london flew over to houston and the picture on the right here is just after we've crossed into Quebec. So if you look at the map up there and you can see the red line flying, that that's pretty close to our path. Our, the airplane, the, the route that I was on was a little arched more than this one here. So we did come, we went closer to Greenland than what is on this map here. But just after crossing into Quebec, I took this picture here, and you can just see the frozen tundra. You can see part that looks like there's a lake and a river down there that is frozen and covered. And uh, I'm glad I don't live there. So a man is to love his wife as Christ loved the church. And loving my wife means having patience with her. That means thinking about her first. And oftentimes what that means 
is asking myself how she feels. And instead of trying to guess, I need to listen and learn to listen and be quick or quick to listen and slow to speak. And uh, and we talked about that. You know, I, I am studying to get my master's degree in family counseling. And there's a lot of things that I'm learning. And communication is absolutely the most important thing in a relationship. And when somebody is upset about something, when we get defensive, that is exactly the opposite of what we need to be doing. If we're upset about the same thing they're upset with, then we probably shouldn't even talk about it. We should probably make an appointment for some time the next day when both of us are calmed down to talk about it then. But oftentimes, in my case anyways, oftentimes when my wife is upset or I'm not upset and I can, in the past, I have gotten into this defensive mode because in my opinion, she just doesn't understand the issue and I need to explain it to her so that she understands. And what I've learned is that I, before I even try to defend myself at all, I need to listen to her and understand what she's feeling and where she's coming from. I can explain my situation. I can explain my position later. But the first, the most important thing is to validate her feelings, to understand where she's coming from. Even if I disagree with her, and even if I scratch my head and say, woman, you don't understand this issue at all. That might be, but there's a time and a place to express those feelings and to discuss that when she's upset about something i need to listen to what she has to say and hopefully she understands that and does the same when i'm upset about something that that she's able to listen to me but if we're both upset then we need to just put the conversation on hold and come to an agreement about what time we can talk about it the following day so that we can circle around and, and discuss it the next day when we're both much calmer. But that is really one of the most important things I learned or I have learned about human relationship skills and making a marriage a healthy place to grow spiritually. Because really a marriage is supposed to be a healthy place to grow spiritually. My wife should help me grow spiritually and I should help her grow spiritually. We should study the Bible together, attend religious services together, and experience spirituality together. And if that's going to happen, if marriage is going to be a spiritual blessing to somebody, it's essential that they have good and consistent communication with their spouse. And when disagreements come up, which they will, misunderstandings will come up, there has to be a system that they have in place to work through those, to discuss those. And if one person is upset, oftentimes the other person can zip it up and be patient and listen and, and they can work through it. But if both of them are upset, then they need to shelf it, you know, and wait until the next day. And, uh, and I love this verse from Song of Solomon's or uh, Canticles. It says, he brought me to his banqueting, banquet hall, his banner over me, his love. And in ancient societies, you know, a man would provide for a woman's needs uh, physically, you know, give her food to eat, clothing to, to wear, and shelter from the elements. And so a man, often would express his love towards his woman by providing for her needs. And in modern society, many women can work and provide for their own physical needs, their own nourishment. They can buy their own clothing and they can buy their own food. But a man still needs to help provide for her spiritual and emotional needs. And that is what I plan to do with my marriage with Melts is to play the role that God wants me to play in her life. And 
she's expressed to me that that is the role she wants to play for me. She wants to play the role of a wife and, and be the wife that God wants her to be. So we'll see. We'll see. We, uh, we can only do it one day at a time. And we are starting this journey together. And we pray that God uh, uses us and we stay together for the rest of our lives serving God and being a blessing to other people in our life.